Hi there and welcome back to the Ingrain Workshop. I'm Rick and in today's video we're going to be replacing my existing rotted four rail fence with a new sparkly four rail fence. Check it out and to find out what sparkly means stay tuned to the end of the video. Now let's get started. Welcome back. So this is what our four rail fence looks like. It's about 20 years old. We had some jasmine growing on the fence and it looked pretty and smelled great. Unfortunately, over time, just the weight of the jasmine started breaking the rails and in a couple spots it literally broke the 4x4 post. So I put it off as long as I could, but the supervisor said it was time. So let's get this DIY project started. We started this project in the winter time. Uh, the first thing I had to do was cut the jasmine. Um, so I just used a Zawzall with a wood blade on it uh, just to cut the jasmine off at the root. Um, you know, I wasn't going to try to cut the jasmine loose from the fence portion because it was just so intertwined uh, in the 2x4 welded wire uh, fence that you know it would just take me forever so I thought that uh, the jasmine would just come out when I when I took out the metal portion of the fence so I cut what I could loose from the fence and then once I did that then I uh, started cutting loose the uh, metal I used two separate skill saws on this project you know you don't need it uh, you could get by with just one but it was just easier for me because what I did is I just left a metal cutting blade in one skill saw and a wood cutting blade in the other skill saw. So I just used the metal cutting blade uh, to cut through the uh, two inch by four inch welded wire fence. Um, it was just easier to do that than to go in and actually physically pull out every staple that was used to fasten the metal fence to the actual wooden fence post. Um, and, and the other uh, reason why I have two skill saws is I generally keep either a metal cutting blade or a masonry cutting blade in this skill saw so it's dedicated just for those two uses and that works out real well. After cutting through the metal fence with the uh, skill saw um, I did have to go back on the very bottom um, and use my uh, Klein's uh, just to cut I think the, the very bottom portion of the the metal fence with the skill saw you just couldn't get all the way down to the ground uh, so here I'm just going back with my Kleins and cutting just the bottom portion loose and then Z and I will be able just to take uh, this eight foot section of metal fence off and that made it easier too for disposing of the fence uh, because they were cut up in eight foot sections I was able to load them up in my truck and take them to the dump a lot easier than you know if we had this had it rolled up and especially with the jasmine all intertwined in the uh, metal fence it would have just made for a nightmare to try to dispose of it and get it to the dump so doing it this way overall was just an easier way for us uh, to remove the metal portion of the fence and dispose of it at the dump. Once we had all the metal fence removed, then I switched over to my circular saw that had the uh, wood blade on it and just went down and cut each wood slat loose from the post. It was easier doing it this way uh, simply because most of the screws were rusted or stripped and it would just take a long time to try to unscrew each slat from the post. So it was easier for me to just go through here and uh, cut the slats loose. And then also we're going to try to repurpose these slats for a future project. So I think that's going to work out good for us. Um, and and this, this made the process go fairly quick. Um, but it is a two-person process because you do need one person to hold 
the slat in place to keep your uh, your blade from binding on you as you cut through the wood slat. Now that all the wood slats are removed, we can start tackling the fence post, which was a big challenge for us because the age of our fence, probably 50% of the post were broken off or rotted. This particular post here was a newer post that we had put in, um, so it's going to come out fairly easy. Uh, but the other posts that were rotted or broken off, I'll leave a link in the video to a more detailed process on how we got out the different fence posts. Uh, but you basically use a utility jack, as you'll see here in a minute, and just jack them, literally jack, jack them out of the ground. And that seemed to be the easiest way for us. We had approximately 40 I believe 40 fence posts to remove and we re removed them fairly quickly. It took about five to ten minutes per post do, using this technique. So I, I highly recommend uh, clicking on the link and, and looking at the video on how we remove the uh, fence post. With the fence post removed, I took my six inch auger and just started digging out the holes. Now keep in mind we're putting a new fence in the exact same place of the uh, the old fence so you know this this was a pretty quick process as well um, again I'm just going down as far as I can with my six inch auger um, and basically just re-drilling out all the holes uh, making sure we got out all the concrete there are no roots you definitely have to watch it when using an auger uh, that you don't uh, you're not digging in an area that has a lot of root Okay, so we have the uh, fence finally removed, completely um, demolished. Uh, we've got the, uh, the fence holes dug out with the uh, gas auger. Um, that's a gas auger that I got from Harbor Freight. Um, so I think we're ready to start the installation of the corner post. And once we get the corner post installed, then we'll take and uh, make sure that they're plumb and in concrete, let them set up overnight. Then tomorrow I'll come back out and run a line from the top of all the corner posts and then we can set all the other posts off of that line. So let me show you um, how I'm uh, cutting the, the post right now. So I've made one line at 54 inches and I've marked that. That's the height of our post, our fence post is going to be 54 inches above the finished grade. I put an X on the top side of the line. That's where I'll put a two before, just so I'll know uh, the level that I'm at when I'm installing the post to make sure that it's sitting 54 inches above the ground. The second mark on the post is six inches from the bottom. These are eight foot posts. Um, we're gonna cut them down to seven and a half feet. That way, 36 inches will be in, in the ground. So I, I was only able to auger out 36 inches. I don't feel like we need to auger out another six inches. I'd have to dig that by hand with the post hole diggers. So it's just easier, I think, just to cut the six inches off. And we'll have 36 inches below grade, 54 inches above grade. Now that I have the post cut to length, I'll take and install two 36 inch long 2x4s um, at the 54 inch mark. This will ensure that the posts stick 54 inches above grade and then 36 inches below grade. And you can see it there, the 54 inches and then the 36 inches and that's how I'll install them. Here you can see how it's going to work. Um, I probably could have got by with just one two before, um, but I did go ahead and install two. 
and it was a good thing to have them at least 36 to 48 inches so they'd span the width of the hole. I went ahead and put some concrete in the bottom of the hole just so I could uh, plumb it up and uh, once I got it plumb now I can uh, put in the remaining concrete. I'm gonna it's gonna take me probably two bags of I believe those, these were 60 pound bags of concrete to, to fill up each hole. I'm gonna add a little water here check for plumb and then dump the rest of the concrete in the hole and then add a little bit more water to complete the installation and then I will double check one more time for plumb. Now that all the concrete's installed and watered and mixed I can uh, go back and take off the two befores um, and then once I take off the two befores I am going to check it one more time just to make sure that I stayed plumb um, and then I'm going to take and finish the top of the concrete cap. You always want to make sure you've got a good taper um, down from the post because the last thing you want is a depression in your concrete cap so water can accumulate because if water is able to accumulate and just sit on top of the uh, concrete cap it's just going to rot out your post uh, sooner than expected um, and you know you want these posts to last uh, 15 to 20 years. Here are the completed corner posts that are along the front property line and these are these will be the two posts that I run a string between. From this corner post to the next one I've got a seven degree slope um, so you know I've got more than just four corner posts and then you can see the far post there so the far post to this post will be one straight run and then from that post down to this corner post will be another at a seven degree angle. Now I'm going to set a string line along the top of the post uh, to keep the posts directly in line with each other and then I'm going to run a line down at the bottom of the post um, which will keep the front of the post in line with each other and I'm still going to take um, as I stall, install the intermediate post, I'm going to make sure that they're all plumb and straight. But this is more of just a guide. And again, I'm, I'm running it from a corner post to the other corner post. I'm just going to run it across the top and then across the front. And again, it's just to keep things in line. It's not going to be perfect, uh, you know, depending on the, where your holes are dug. Uh, you know, you might be out a little bit uh, one way or the other, but it's not going to make that huge of a difference. I think it's more important to keep everything plumb, um, even if it's out of alignment. And then the intermediate posts are installed exactly like the uh, corner post, for the exception of you don't have to use the 2x4s at 54 inches. Um, you just measure the height up to the uh, the top of your string line and install it uh, in line with the uh, the string. Now that all the fence posts are installed, it's time to make a jig for the rails. So I took some 1x2, measured down 2 inches from the top, and then marked my rail locations, um, leaving a 6 inch space between rails. That's just how Z and I wanted the, it to look. Uh, you can use whatever dimensions that you'd like. And then I cut up some uh, 6 inch 1x2s, and I'm going to mount those to the vertical uh, one by twos and what this will do it will allow me to install this jig on the fence post and then I will be able to install the rails I'm going to end up building two of these jigs um, so I can install the rails pretty much by myself and without using a tape measure so once I get this bottom rail guide in place then I'll just work my way up the uh, the, the jig and install the rail guides for the other four rails. Now this is at the top of the jig and what I'm doing here is I'm putting another one by two. 
I think it might have been five inches long and this is going to fit on top of the post um, and then once I get this horizontal piece installed I'll install a smaller vertical piece on the other end and it will make a U shape and, and basically uh, what this will do is it, it will it will allow me to hang the jig off the top of the post without permanently affixing the jig to the post this way I can just move the jig down the uh, fence line as I as I'm installing the rails and it just makes for a lot more efficient work and you're able to get the fence installed a lot quicker and a lot more accurate uh, without the use of a tape measure or any help for for that matter so here I'm starting at the uh, corner post and you can see the jig holding up the uh, bottom rail and then once I get the uh, first rail installed then I can just continue on up the jig until I get all four rails installed You'll notice here I'm staggering the rails using 8 footers and 16 footers. It just makes for a better joint at the post. Now that the fence post and the rails are installed, it's time to stain the fence. We're using a product from one of the big box stores. It's a Valspar semi-transparent stain and the color was Napa Wine. Now it's time to install the 2x4 uh, welded wire fence. The easiest way to lay it out is like I'm doing here is just to lay it down and then just uh, unroll it and then once you get it somewhat unrolled uh, just uh, stand it up next to the fence. Um, that was the easiest way I found to unroll it. You can see here I'm taking a piece of flat bar and I'm literally weaving it uh, through the fence. Um, this is going to be my pull bar and what I'm going to do is I've made a jig um, years ago when we installed the chain link fence around our tennis courts and it's basically an inch and a half diameter pipe with a couple of J bolts. I'm going to use a ratchet strap just to uh, pull the, the fence tight and then once I get it somewhat tight I'll be able to take a quarter inch pneumatic stapler and I'm using galvanized staples so I think they were a quarter inch by one inch and using those to just staple the fence portion to the, uh, the wood post and I'm only pulling eight foot sections at a time and you'll notice that my pull bar is just on the other side of the post and once I get this done I'll move on to the next section okay so now it's time to make the fence glittery and how we're gonna do that is by installing solar lights on the post caps and we're going to do that along the front property line. We're not going to do that on the sides, but we are going to put the solar lights along the front property line. So let's get them installed. And just like that, we have a glittery fence. I think the solar lights make a major improvement on the fence itself, and it just really gives it that, 
that little piece of uh, glam uh, that you're really looking for uh, in a four rail fence. Well, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helps you out in your fence project. If you have any questions about what I did or if you just simply have questions about your own fence project, leave questions in the comments sections below and I'll get them answered. I want to give a special thanks to my beautiful wife who without her help I couldn't have done this project and by the way she probably stained 95% of the fence. I know you didn't see it in the video you only saw me staining a little portion, but trust me, she stained pretty much all of it. Uh, huge help. I um, also have a milestone I'd like to announce. Um, we do have now 100 subscribers to the channel, so that's great. And a shout out to all the subscribers. Um, you know, without your support, this channel would not be possible. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below to all the products and the equipment that we used. This is Rick with the Ingrain Workshop signing out. I'll see you next week and thanks for watching and please share.